So to solve part A, we're going to use the capacitance formula, which is C is equal to the area times epsilon naught over D. Now the variables we're given are all right here. We have the distance, we have the area, and we already know what epsilon naught is or the permittivity of free space. So we'll go ahead and solve for the capacitance. And this will give us a value of 1.1 .1 times 10 to the minus 8 farads. Now to solve part B, we're going to use this E field formula. The E field is equal to Q over A times epsilon naught. Now, here we're already given the E field, and we already know the area, so we'll just go ahead and solve for Q. So Q is equal to E times A times epsilon naught. And we get 27 coulombs. So that ends the video right here. If you continue to watch, I'm going to derive the capacitance formula. So to begin this derivation, let's first talk about a charge plate, a very large plate containing a charge distribution on it. Now we're going to construct a Gaussian surface. And the surface we're going to construct is this cylinder. Now using Gauss's law, we know that this is what Gauss's law looks like. So we need to find the flux going through the cylinder. Now keep in mind that when we have, let's say these are all positive charges, on this large parallel plate, we have the E field that goes outwards like this. So the E field going through this cylinder is going through the top as well as the bottom right here. It won't go through the sides because at on the sides of the cylinder it's at a 90 degree angle or I should say it's going parallel with it so the flux at the sides is zero. So if we continue solving using Gauss's law we get E times A is equal to the sum of the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. Now the area here, as I just said, the E field is passing through the top of the cylinder and the bottom of the cylinder. So we have E times, we have 2 times pi r squared. Now the enclosed charge right here, the charge inside this Gaussian surface will be the sigma times the area over epsilon naught. We use this form because we have this very large surface, if you want to think it three-dimensionally. Here we have this really big sheet of metal, and we have charges all over it. So it has a charge density, and we use this symbol right here. And we multiply it by an area to tell us the charge per area. And then if you recall, we have the cylinder right here. That's passing right through it. A poor drawing. So once again, we need to find the area. So we'll get E times 2 pi r squared is equal to the charge density times pi r squared divided by epsilon naught. The pi r squared terms cancel out. And we get that the E field is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon naught for this conducting plate right here. Now imagine we have two conducting plates. One side will have positive charges. The other side will have negative charges. The E field from the positive plate goes outwards like this. The E field for the negatively charged plate will go inwards like this. And as you can see, on the outside of these plates, 
the E field cancels out, the vectors will terminate one another. So we have an E field that is zero on the outside. On the inside, we add these two vectors. So we would get a two E. So we already said that from one plate, the E field is sigma over two epsilon naught. So what we'll do is we'll add these vectors right here. So that'll give us an E field of two sigma over two epsilon naught. Now the twos cancel. And for a capacitor, which is with two parallel plates, we get that the E field is sigma over epsilon naught. We can go ahead and find an alternate formula for this. So we said that sigma is the charge density. So it's a charge per area. So we can go ahead and rewrite the E field to be Q over the area times epsilon naught. So this is the first important equation we're going to need. Also recall that the potential difference or the voltage is equal to the electric field times the distance. We can rewrite this and isolate E. So we get that the electric field is the voltage over the distance. This is our second important formula. What we're going to do is combine equation one and equation two and set them equal to each other. Resulting in this equation right here. If we go ahead and solve for Q, we get the capacitance formula. This term right here is the capacitance, which we denote with the letter C. So we get that the capacitance is equal to the area times epsilon naught over D. And earlier in the video, I showed this formula right here in order to solve part B of the question. And what we did was we had to use this alternative form right here. So these two equations that I'm circling and that is how we derive the capacitance formula and that other electric field formula.